us, Lord God, so we can see your greatness. That we serve a true and a living God. Father God, your word say how terrible it is to fall in the hands of a living God. Thank you, Lord. Because, Father God, you're not dead, you're alive. Amen, amen. And, Father God, we bless you, Lord God, for being our God. We bless you, Lord God, for giving us a name above all names. We thank you, Lord God, for your names that you have revealed to us, Lord God. You made yourself known to us, the Lord of hosts. You made yourself revealed to us, Lord God, Emmanuel, the God who's always with us. You made yourself revealed to us, Lord God. that we may receive, our, our ears that we can hear, our eyes that we can see, Lord God. That we can be renewed, that we can be changed, Lord God, in your presence. So, Father, we thank you for being a great God and for being the all-powerful God. Lord, we thank you right now. In Jesus' name we pray. And we'll all say amen. I know most of us this morning is a little bit tired. You know, some of you all that was at the gala the other day. But I want to thank the Lord anyway. Amen? Amen. So you guys, I wanted to start off. I have a word that I want to give. And it's short. It's a pretty short word, but I want to give it. And I want us to receive it. Amen? Amen. Okay. The title of this word is called The Wisdom of the Sower. The wisdom of the sower. And before we get started, you guys, I want us to stand for our foundational scripture. So can you all stand as we go to the next slide? And I want to read 2 Corinthians 9, 10. You should be able to see it on the slide. Ready? Let's read. Now he that ministereth seed to the sower both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness. Amen? Amen. Please remain standing. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word, Lord thank God. You, Lord. Let your word come alive to us, Lord yes. God, today, Lord God, as we plant these seeds within ourselves, Lord God. Let it take root in us and grow as we water it today, Lord God. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for giving us your word and giving us the opportunity to use and hear your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's go ahead and get seated. First of all, I wanted to start off by just asking um, everyone who's listening to this message, if you can, if you can, if you have the opportunity, please go back, you guys, and listen to the message, the Sunday and the Tuesday messages of Pastor Isaac that he's been given, giving for the last month about the sea. Uh, I'm telling you all, just hearing that word, I was talking to my care group and I said, oh my God, this, this message makes me want to literally quit my job, literally, <laughs> like, and go do what God really called me to do, right? But then the Lord said, no, that's what I called you to do, stop, you know? <laughs> okay, okay, Lord, okay, I was ready to quit, you know? Oh, quit, get back over there, and you'll see what, where, where, how the Lord really helped me with that. So, 
You guys, there's so much to glean out of that message. When I tell you, when I go back and I listen to Power Pastor Isaac's message and I take notes, and I even look at my Sunday notes, it's like, oh, wow. There's so much to say. There's so much in this, you guys, that you have to take it and you got to go back. After we hear a good word like this, be careful. Because a lot of times, as soon as you get out in your car, arguments. Yeah. As soon as you go out your door, problems. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get home, situations. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And what that is doing is really literally, literally causing you to forget what you heard. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's the reason. You got to remember that. That's the reason. Right? So when you get a good word and you say, ooh, wow, write that thing down. Mm -hmm. And then go back mm -hmm. and look at it. And look at it. And, and even when the problem comes, just look at it and say the thing. Look at it and say the word. Whatever the word is. Remember to do that. Amen? Amen. So I wanted to t share that with you all because there was so much. Um, and I'm just going to be able to hit on a little bit of the word. So here's the thing I wanted to tell you all. One of the things we know and we've always said in this church and we've learning is the fact that in Genesis where God said man was created in his image and in his likeness. And then we learn also that we have something called a seed inside of us, right? When you were created in God's image and in God's likeness, there's a God-likeness. God-likeness. Because he said he created you in his image and in his likeness. So there's a God-likeness okay. in you. And you got to understand that, that God, there's something just like God that's in you. And so we were learning that this seed, this God-likeness is a power that we don't even understand truly, okay? It is, it is a seed that has abilities, it has, as we learn, potential, and it's able to multiply, and there's a lot that goes into the seed. And I was getting ready to go off and tell, listen, I had so much on my mind, but God was just, stay here. But I wanted to talk a little bit about the sower, because in that scripture, when we looked at that scripture, it was telling us a little bit more about, it says that God, now he that ministers seed to the sower. God gives seed to the sower, and that's one of the words we've been learning over and over again. God gives seed to the sower. Mm. So that made me think that, so if you're not sowing, does God give you seed? But there is a seed that you already have in you. I, mean, I just want to start, start off by saying this. All of us, because we have that God likeness. But then God also gives seed to the sower. He gives seeds to the sower. So we understand a sower then is like a farmer. A sower is a person who plants. He gives seed to someone who sows. Yes. I heard you, Pastor Shaquille. Yes. He gives seed. You have to be able to sow yes. in order to get seed from God. So you can't take the seed and hide the seed. Yeah. That's like that talent. Yeah. You know the talent where the guy took the thing and said, Lord, I know you were strict. You know, you're real strict, so I took the seed, yeah. I took the talent, and I, yeah. no, you got to sow it. So, go, go back, go back, go back. There you go, slow down. <laughs> so here it is, the thing I wanted to say here is this, when I talk about a farmer, Yes. A farmer or a sower understands several things. And that's why I, I first titled the, 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 the wisdom of a sower. We think farmers don't, you know, oh, that's just a farmer. A farmer has to learn a lot. A farmer has to know a lot of things, right? Yes. So the farmer has to know the soil, yes. right? He has to know what kind of soil it is. He has to know whether that soil has enough nutrients in it. He needs to know whether he needs to plant a bumper crop on that soil in order to make that soil come back alive because he needs to put something on it and let that thing die over it right. and it makes that seed, that, that soil come alive. Right. He needs to know the temperature that he needs, because some plants don't grow in certain temperature. I can't plant apple necessarily or certain things here in Florida, but it will grow in Washington because Washington is cold and it needs a cold air, okay. right? He needs to know how much water the thing needs. He needs to get up early. A farmer gets up early and he goes and he, he takes care of the seed. He needs to know if it's too cold and he needs to protect the seed. Mm -hmm. Hold up. So God gives seed to the sower. And then I learned where Pastor Holly was telling us, he, the question,
question he asked was, what seed are you sowing? And if you're sowing a seed, how are you taking care of that seed? If the farmer does all of that to see, how are we taking care of this seed that God has given us? Wow. Wow. Are we getting up early? Are we watering it? I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but are we doing the things that the seed requires in order to grow? God gives seed to the sower. You have to be the one to lay. Y'all know how backbreaking and laboring farming is? You know you gotta bend down and dig and open that soil. You gotta know how deep to put that soil, that seed, because if you put it too deep, certain seed, it, you're gonna kill it. You put it too high, you might kill it. You gotta know exactly how deep. So you gotta study. You gotta study as a farmer. And so I wanted you all to understand there comes wisdom with us getting seeds too. And us taking that seed and planting that seed. Let's go to the next one. Now I want to go to, to the easy to read version of that same scripture. So here it is. It says this. It says, God is the one who gives seed to those who what? Plant. He gives seed to those who plant. Not to anyone else. You got to be able to pour yourself into that thing. My God, my God. You got to be able to pour out. So when you get a seed, take that seed and try telling that seed to someone else. Plant it. So it to someone else. You know what happens when you do that? You start understanding the seed a little bit better. Because unless I pour that seed into someone else, I don't understand the seed. I just hold the seed. But when I get a word, yes. let me share this with you. Yes. That's why we understand that our kids are our seed. Uh -huh. We pour into them. Yes. Right. You get a word from the church, pour it into them. Yeah. You know what Pastor said? What you thought about that word? That's good. That's yeah. good. This is what I got. You know what it does for you? What it's doing is God is going to give you more seed. Because yes. mm -hmm. now he's going to open up that seed a little bit more to you because yeah. the seed has yeah, to yeah, open yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what happened to them is you planting a seed in them. Yeah. And what they're doing is once they say that seed too, they're planting the seed. Y'all yeah. gotcha. see that? Yeah, yeah. So what we have to do, you guys, we have, we have to remember that God is the one who gives seed to those who plant and he gives bread for food. And we learn, you got to be careful, you guys, because you don't want to use your seed for food. And I started thinking, oh my God, that's what I think you blowing my mind. Because I was thinking, well, 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 you know, what's the difference? I'm not going to go into that. But I know there's some things I'm thinking about, and I'm like, Lord, you're trying to show me something here. Yeah. Because there is a seed for planting yes. and food to eat it. And sometimes we take our seed and we throw it, turn it into food. Be careful. Yes. 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 Be careful. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. You got to be careful. So God gives you something to eat. And it comes out of you. Then he gives you something to sow. Mm -hmm. He gives you something yes, to sow. Yes, yes, yes. Right? Mm -hmm. God's always supplying everything we need. So I asked myself, well, how is it that Pastor Shaquilla knows so much about love? She kept sowing into that seed. She keeps talking about it. And the more she talks about it, God gives her more. Yeah. And the more she talks about it, God gives her more. But guess what she's doing? She doesn't realize that when she writes that book, and she put that book out there on Amazon, she's sowing a seed. Yeah. Yes. Yes. When Esther wrote that little baby child's book and she put it on Amazon, she's sowing a, a seed. When Sister Natalie wrote a book and she put it on Amazon, she's sowing a, a seed. And the Bible says, eventually that son is going to come back to you because you're planting it. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Not only are you all planting it, you're planting it into the world. Mm -hmm. my God. My God. You don't know who's going to pick that up. That's it. You don't know what kid is going to open that book. Oh my God. The B, the B, the B yeah. sound. The kid can't say the B, but. That's true. That's it. But you're planting yeah. a seed. What we do is the mistake we do. Oh my God, I left the slide out. I don't know why I took that out. But what we do is we take out the seed or we dismiss the seed too early. Yeah. You know how sometimes you go in the ground and if the farmer plants the seed, he has to leave that seed there. Yeah. Yes. What we do is we dig it up. Is it growing? Yeah. yeah. Is it growing? Yes. Is it growing? Yes. What are you doing? You messing up that seed. Yes. Wow. Leave it. Leave it. 
And then God gave you more seed. Plant. My God. Plant. Yes. Plant. Yes. Yes. Plant. Whatever the seed is, I'm, I'm, I'm using you all because y'all wrote books, right? It could be something else. It could be a word. I was thinking, I said, why is Pastor Isaac can come up here and he can just minister and when I'm hardly looking at his notes, I have to look at my notes. I need a PowerPoint. He just, you know why? Because he's sowing. And the more he sows to you, the more God gives him. So you want the seed to grow in you? Sow it. And God will give you spiritual seed. Pastor, I don't go on that. You know, I'm not even touching. I'm going to hit that just a little bit. And, and God will give you spiritual seed and make that seed grow. He will produce the See, God is the one that makes it grow. Right. So when you're sowing it, God is the one making it grow. Yes. And you don't even know. Do you know some people become famous? Oh, what? what's the word? What's the word? There's a word called posthumously. Posthumously. It's spelled real crazy, right? But it means after they die. They become famous. Oh. Mm. They wrote a book. They wrote a something, and they left it out there. Mm. Right. And all of a sudden, a yes. hundred years later, yes. ten years later, yes. someone discovered that word. Talk about that word. Yes. That word becomes famous. Now they all point to this person, but the person is gone. But you sow the seed. So we got to understand the power of the seed. There's some things in the seed that we're learning. There's some things that we... So God is the one, you guys. God is the one, you guys, that gives us spiritual seeds. These words we speak, you guys, these are spiritual seeds. So when we get a word, like you always been, and I was telling Pastor Isaac, I said, Pastor Isaac, do you know when we were on this fast, it, some people were like, oh my God. I, I remember Brother, where's Brother Kirk? Brother Kirk was getting scriptures, like, he was getting revelations. Oh my God, I see this. And other people was just getting right in revelation when we was reading um, the, the whole book of John. Those were seeds falling inside of us. Yes. Yeah. What we were supposed to do is stop and take that little piece, dig it, open it, water it. What is it? What else going with that? Why, why is God showing me this? Why did God make that scripture open up to me? Because mm -hmm. not all scriptures would open up to everybody. Right. But why did he make that one? Oh, Jesus prayed for me. Why is that one so sick? That one hit everybody. Like, everybody like, oh my God, Jesus prayed for me. Why? Did... Yes. It was a seed. To let you understand when you're not even praying for yourself, God is still praying right for you. you. Yeah. That before you even knew yourself or before you was alive, Jesus prayed for you. Yes. Mm -hmm. That no matter what it is you did, because he knew you was going to already do it, he still what? Prayed right. for you. Mm. That seed hit all of us. Mm. Mm -hmm. But sometimes we let it go, oh, the fast finish, that's it. But no, that's your seed. Take it. Study it. Yes. Share it. Someone come to you. Listen, I don't know what you're talking to me. I don't know a lot of scriptures. I just want to tell you this. Jesus prayed for you. Plant the seed. Hallelujah. My God, my God. Plant the seed. Plant the seed. Jesus. So remember this, though. Remember this. It says this in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and that same thing. It says, remember this. Whosoever, whoever sows sparingly will also do what? Reap. Reap sparingly. And whosoever sows what? Generously. Generously will also what? Reap. Reap generously. That's why God wants us to sow. Amen. That's why God wants us to sow. Right? And Pastor Isaac says, he said, you can never expect the harvest where you have not sown. Amen. I can't expect the harvest where I didn't sow that thing. Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I want to become rich. I'm not, I'm not sowing a harvest in that thing. I'm not trying to go and get some knowledge about that thing. If I want to learn how to invest, teach me. I gotta go get some, I gotta put some seed inside of me. Yes. Then I gotta sow into that thing. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come that easy. Lord, bless me. Sometimes, yeah, boom, you get a million dollars. Then what happens? You waste it, because you don't understand the seed. Yeah. You didn't understand the purpose of that seed. Mm -hmm. You didn't understand why God gave you that seed. That's why a lot of people, like they tell you, a lot of people become millionaires overnight, they lose it overnight. Mm -hmm. So it's the seed, it's the seed. Here's the thing God tells us about the seed. It says the fruit, and this is in Proverbs 11.30. It says the fruit of the righteous is what? A tree of life. A tree of life. So somehow someone had a seed, and the seed you put inside of you, all of a sudden, you begin to start getting fruits out. 
a tree of life. We, this is what we do. We, we start giving out life. Right? That's fruits. After the seed has been planted, after the seed has been watered, after a while you've been in a seed and that seed has been watered, you need to start bearing fruit. There's some things called the fruit of the spirit that we need to start bearing those fruits. It's a tree of life. When people come around me, I should be giving out life. 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 Yes. Life. Yes. But it's the fruits. But look at the end part of it. It says, and he that what? When his soul is what? Is wise. You that sower that know how to seek the, the soul. You, you that sower that knows how. This, this, oh, look at this person right here. See, I got to know how to win this soul. The only way I can win this soul, I got to plant a seed. Mm, this person is going through something. Is it now? Do I tell them this thing? Or do I comfort them at this time? God will teach you how to give that seed to that person. Teach you how to sow into that person. God will bring people around you. You got to be careful. God will bring people around you for you to sow a seed. You got to know the timing. That's it. You got to know the timing. God's going to teach you of the wisdom of how to win souls. He that wins souls is wise. Our thing is to win souls for Christ. Our thing is to not let our brothers and sisters go and burn in hell. Yo, we're living in a time, you guys, where Oh my God, if a kid goes to school, you don't know if that kid gonna come back home. Oh my God. We never live in a time like this. Yeah. We've been doing so much drills, you guys. Yeah, that is Lately, yeah, mm. we've been doing so many drills. If this happens, what to do? If this happens, what to do? If this happens, what to do? Lockdown, lockdown. No wonder the kids are all nervous. Yeah. No wonder the kids are all anxious. Wars, rumors of wars, COVID, no COVID, you know, pandemic, no pandemic. The kids are... Listen, my, my students read me, uh, 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 some of my students read uh, their journal to me. And I'll tell y'all, no lie, it, it caused me to cry. Because I looked at them and I said, man, I used to remember when I used to just go out and we used to run around and we could go to the park and we could go to the pool. And we would, we, I wasn't thinking about, you know, child trafficking, someone going to snatch me. We didn't think of none of that. And yet y'all right here thinking about the fight in Palestine and in Israel and wars and rumors of war and they might attack America. And block. Oh my God. The Republicans will get, come on. So the kids were like, I, they was expressing, I said, I said well, what's, what's on your mind? That was the title of their journal. What's on your mind? And I was shocked about the things the kids are thinking about. They thinking, do I have a future? Is this world going to be in existence? Will my parents have to run with me? Can I survive? Like, stuff like that. Like, why are they killing us? The Jewish kids was asking, I went, why are they killing us? Why everybody wants us dead? <laughs> like, oh boy. But again, you guys, we got the soul. So God gives us wisdom to sow. Yes. God gives us wisdom to sow. And so in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, and 7, it says this. And this is how we know God wants us to be sowers. So Paul says this. He says, I planted the seed. Yes. Apollos does what? Water it in, but who? God. God has been God has been making it what? Grow. Grow. So neither the one who plants nor the one who waters, we not really anything, but it's God who what? Makes things grow. But however, God wants to show us that as Christians, one is planting. Yes. One is watering. Yes. One is planting. Yes. One is you don't know who you are, yes. right? You don't know which one you are. Sometimes you're the one giving the seed and you don't even recognize it. Sometimes you're the one watering the seed because yeah. the seed has already been given. You know how sometimes you walk to someone and you talk to them and you say something to them and the Holy Spirit tells you to say something. Right. Just say something to them. You, don't, you just met the person, just, just say this to them. And the Holy Spirit tells you to say that to them. And the person starts to cry. Mm -hmm. And the person might say, you're the third person that said that to me today. Oh my God. You're watering it. You're watering it. Or the person looking at you said, what? I've never heard that before. You planted it. 
So we got to know, we plant seeds, we, we plant seeds. I, I got this revelation where Pastor Isaac was talking about the, 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 the widow. And he was saying that the widow, the, 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 the prophet came to her, there was a famine in the land, and the prophet asked her, what do you have? She said, all I have is a little bit of oil. And then he said, okay, go get the rest of those things, those, those, those vessels. And then he told her, take that oil and pour it into empty vessels. And the more she poured it into empty vessels, it kept coming, it kept coming, it kept coming. That anointing will keep coming the more you pour it out. Lord, I want manifestation. Lord, I want power. Lord, I want this. But you're not pouring it out. And God said, pour it out. That's oil. Oil. The anointing. Pour it out. Pour it out. Pour it out. And the more you pour it out, the more you get it. The more you pour it out. And it doesn't matter who God tells you to pour it out to. Stop looking at people. Stop looking at circumstances. Because that's what happened to me. Don't do that. You don't know God. That's God's business. That's God's person. God puts something in that person. He just wants you to go there and do the thing. Let's not be selfish, y'all, God. But with God's anointing, pour it out. I remember when I first started teaching the kids, and I was doing um, a Bible study at the school. And I remember the first group of kids I had was a bunch of young boys that came to me, and they were all classified as ESE. Everybody in the school, they were classified as ESE. And I said, okay, God, thank you. And I was talking to them, and you know, they would come in, they would joke, they would play around, and you try to give them the word, and they would joke with each other, and call each other's name, and, and I'm thinking, Lord, Lord, Lord. And then the Lord hit me and says, why did I send you that seed? What are you doing? Because you're not really watering that seed. You need to pour it into some of these kids. They need to know that that label they put on them is not who they really are. You need, you, I, I brought them to you, to you for you to take the label off of them mm -hmm. and give the label I put on them. Mm -hmm. What am I calling them? Because they call them slow. They call them E A D H D. You, 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 attention deficit. I said, no. You were made in my image and in my likeness. Yes. You have God see in you. You have, oh my God. You have to see the greatness inside of you. People may say something about you, but listen here, there's a lot of people that have certain deficiencies, but those deficiencies doesn't define them. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Let me tell you all this. People like my principal, she'll tell you, she said, I have ADHD. What she can do, I can't do it. There's some things she can operate under, I can't do it. Because my mind is like, if I'm doing this, let's finish this project. I'm like this. That's how I am. But with them, they can see Pastor Chiquilla holding that baby. They can see Darius doing this. They can see Marlene sit back with her hands folded. They can see my brother Charles back there. Their mind's like this. Yes. 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 So here it is, this lady, she's able to have all kinds of activities happen in our school at the same time and keep up with it. Because she has what the, left, the, the, the world says is a deficiency, but God says, no, it's a strength. Amen. It is a strength. Because she came and she took that thing and she said, you know what? Let me take this thing yeah. and let me use this for my help. Yeah. So the lady, and I, because we asked, we said, there's too much going on. People like me are always complaining. Girl, there's too much going on. I can't keep up. I'm not supposed to keep up. I'm I'm a teacher. Stay in your lane. Stay in your lane. That's it. That's it. You just need to go in there and teach. That's what God called you to do. But I'm trying to run the school. Child is too much. You. No. God give her her ability so she can run the school. So kids be walk. Kids come from other schools want to come to our school. Girl, y'all have so much fun over here. Child, I want to come to this school. Oh my God, Lord Jesus, Lord. When they come out, guys, y'all better be quiet. <laughs> Sit down. No. Calm down. No. <laughs> right. But I do. I just don't like the lot all over the place. Y'all sit down. <laughs> but they so happy. Sit down. <laughs> so God takes a seed 
that the world calls whatever, and God does certain things with that seed. And so the Lord sent those young men to me. Mm. Can I tell you all, in that group, there were Jews, there were Muslims, there were blacks, there were Hispanics. All these young men God sent to me to sow some seed into them. Do you know them boys still come back? Mm. They're in the high school. Wow. Thank God. Wow. They're in the high school and they came back. One of them, I was sitting in church one time and he texted me, he said, Miss Green, I'm, I'm getting baptized. Oh, wow. And I'm like, oh, yes, yes, Jesus, yes! Oh, wow. Wow. I don't know what the Lord is going to do with those kids. I don't know what he's going to, where he's going to take them. I don't know what, who, who, what, what seed is going to come out of that. They're young men, so they got their... God sees a man, we see a man, right? But God sees a what? A nation. Oh, my God. And God says, you don't know who that boy right there is going to touch. You don't know what's coming out of him. I don't need you to be knowing everything. I just need you to plant the seed. Plant the seed. Just plant the seed. Say something positive. Say something to this kid that he needs to know. Say something there. That's my job. Here's another thing I saw real quickly. It says this, Pastor Isaac was talking to us about seed having potential. Remember Pastor Isaac? Yeah. The seed has unexpected abilities, you guys. The seed has a reserve power. Go to the next slide at, um, real, really quickly. It says this, we cannot force someone to hear a message that they are not ready to receive. But we must never underestimate the power of what? Planting a seed. There's power when you plant a seed. Because the seed has all that stuff that we were learning. Seed has those unused success, a dormant gift. It has hidden talents. It's that untapped strength. It's that latent power inside of it. It's in the seed. We see it. Oh, it's just a seed. I just put it in the ground. It's in the seed. I just put it in the ground. It's in the seed. I was sharing with my care group. I said, listen, you guys. So I go around and I share this with you all every so often. So these are some seeds. This, and you can barely see it. Can y'all see it? No. no. Right, good. This right here, okay, that you can barely see. Uh huh. That's a mustard seed. God said the mustard seed is the smallest one, but when it grows, it grows the biggest tree. God said all you need to have faith is a grain of mustard seed. Wow. You don't need to be a scholar. Oh, I know the Bible. You're going to learn it. He's going to teach it to you. Don't worry, because the Bible says study to show yourself approved. But all you need to start off is this. Yes. If you start off with, where is it? Where is it? Oh, my God. My seat fell. It's okay. But I planted it. I just dropped it. You just planted it. You just planted it. That's why I watered it. Because I dropped it on concrete. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, that's you right. You know, Tupac wrote about uh, the seed that grew up in concrete. Yes. 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 It ends up exactly. Boy, y'all, you know what, y'all? This, this, y'all, oh, that's what I'm talking about, Brother Kirk. I miss you, Brother Kirk. Yeah. Well, let me get my seed back in my hand. Oh, hey. <laughs> Planting the seed, just having this. And God said, I don't need you to do much because you're not God. Right. Stay in your lane. Uh, I, I just need you to plant this. Uh, I ain't even ask you to plant much. I ain't even ask you to go get a research paper, a doctorate degree. Let me have a doctorate degree, then I'll preach. Lord, let me go know, let me to know 100 scriptures, then I'll go preach. Lord, let me know. No! Start with the one you. Okay, quit, quit. <laughs> I got it. I'm planting seed. Let me give you a seed, Robert. Here you go. There you go. There you go. You don't have to know what the seed does. You don't even know what's in the seed. You just plant it. That's it. Here's the next one. It says, when life hands you dirt, do what? But don't we get mad? No, why am I this dirt? Lord, why am I so this dirt? No, plant a seed. So take whatever it is life throws you. Listen, really quickly, there's this young guy named Inky Johnson. When y'all get a chance, I need y'all to go look up this young boy. His name is Inky Johnson. Inky Johnson was this young, young up and coming 
football player, right? And Inky Johnson was like, they already made a contract with him. You know, people was coming out to see him, and, and they already had a contract for this young kid and said, we're going to sign him professional. And his thing was, Mama, don't worry, I'm going to get you out of this ghetto, man. Like, I, I'm going to get you, I'm going to be the one to get you up out of this thing. So he says they went, they played the last game. The last game, he didn't even need to play. They told him he didn't have to play if he didn't want to. They had already signed him with a professional team. And he went, went out there, he said, and he went out and he did this hit. He went to hit, he hit the guy. Like he did went to block somebody. Collision. He said, and he's, this is a block he's done all the time. He just went and collided with the guy. And then all of a sudden he fell. And he couldn't get up. And they said, Inky, get up, man. He said, I can't. Inky, get up. He couldn't. Inky was paralyzed. What happened to the contract? He'd gone. Inky was given dirt. But God didn't want Inky there, and he learned it later. He said, God wanted me to become a motivational speaker. So here he has one arm that's gone, dead. But now this boy is influencing all these young people now to serve the Lord. Planting a seed. He's planting seed. He's planting seed. That's what he does. He tells you. He shows you his career. He shows you his contract. Everything he has. But he says, God, turn around. The next slide. It says, for a seed to achieve its greatest expression, it, it, it must come completely what? Undone. 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 The shell has to break. Its insides come out. And everything changes. To someone who doesn't understand growth, it looks like complete destruction. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when you're going through and that seed is breaking up and that seed begins to grow, you, it, it feels like, oh my God, like, what's going on, Jesus? Mm -hmm. And we wonder sometimes, like, why do I have problems? Every time I turn around, there's problems. That seed is breaking up. God wants to All see right. your inside. Right. Mm -hmm. God said, I want to see what you're made of. Yeah. I, will, I took you around in Egypt so I could see what, so you would know what was inside you. Yes. So God wants to see that seed. He, he put some word inside of you, and now the seed is breaking up. It's, it's, you, you're being challenged. Things are happening, maybe to your kids. Things are happening, maybe to your husband. Things are happening in your relationship, maybe to your wife. Things are happening. But God wants you to see, can you take that one seed and plant it? We always say all things were good to them who love the Lord and are the called according to his what? All things work together. All things work together. All things work together. So and so problem come, oh Lord Jesus. Where's the scripture? Yeah. Where's that scripture you've been saying? I thought all things work together for good. Can you believe God when you're having problems that it is still for your good? You find a seat? Oh. <laughs> believe God that in the midst of everything happening, it is still for your good. You're getting fired. It's for your good. Mm -hmm. Girl, you chose you religious fast to eat it. Okay. Someone cuss you out. It's for your good. <laughs> Honey, please. That, that's a little too much. Ain't nobody got time for that. I will put down this religion and tell you about yourself. <laughs> but I thought all things worked together for good. David did it when they was cussing David out. When they were trying to kill David, he said, this for my good. He said, this man couldn't do it unless God gave me the permission to do it. Mm -hmm. It's teaching me humility. Mm -hmm. It's teaching me the process. That's how I started teaching on the process. I don't know why he stopped, but he stopped teaching on the process. Because he's trying to tell us there's a process that we all have to go through. There's a process. Mm -hmm. So for a seed to achieve, you guys, a seed has to be cracked. And look at this, the next one. It says this. The tiny seed knew, and this is a later quote, the tiny seed knew that in order to grow, it needed to be dropping what? Dirty. I don't want to get dirty. I don't want to get dirty. I thought I'm saved. I thought Jesus was just supposed to help me out of this. I thought when I get saved, I'm just supposed to, nothing, I'm not supposed to have problems. I'm not supposed to. The tiny seed knew that in order to grow, it needed to be dropped in dirt. dirt. It needed to be covered in darkness. darkness. I don't know what's going on. 
And it needs to struggle to reach what? The light. The light. You got to struggle to reach God, the light, the truth. Oh, that's the truth. All things work together. Oh, now I get it. We get it later. We get it later. After everything that happened, we say, oh, that's why I went through that. Oh, that's why this lady cussed me out. Oh, that's why I got into this accident. Oh, that. You got to be covered in darkness. You got to struggle to reach the light. I found out this. I was watching this Netflix thing, you guys, and um, they, was, they, was, they, they were trying to find out about people who live long, right? People who have who live past 100. And I said, oh man, I like this, you know, because I want to live past 100. All right, so I said, oh Lord, I love this. I want to know what's the secret, right? And they found out there's a group of people that live in Japan, in Okinawa, Japan. Mm -hmm. And they said these people were living like 100, 102, 100, and these people just walking around, dancing, doing all kinds of stuff. And they found out, they asked the people, I said, they said, what happened? Like, why are y'all living so long? Like, what are y'all doing? What are y'all eating? What? You know what they found out? Those are the people that when they had World War II, remember the atomic bomb or yeah. whatever that bomb was? Yeah. That long? Yeah. But, more than got killed or whatever mm -hmm. in that little island. But they said, they said, we always remember. They live with purpose. Mm -hmm. They say every day they're alive, they say, thank God. Wow. There's a purpose inside those people. Wow. They li and every day they say, they got to do something. What can I do today? What can I do today? But because of the struggle, because they were almost wiped out, they survived the longest. So sometimes the challenge that you got, you guys, if the challenge was there, you guys, to help you live longer. Wow. Wow. Thank you, Lord. That's the scene. Y'all better get away with it. Who want that little seat? Who want that little one? That's the name. You want a jam? Yeah. Their mama wants it. Yeah, yeah. Next generation. That's right. She said, I want that seat. I want to live long. But struggles, you guys, is not there to kill us. Struggles are there sometimes to make us stronger. If a tree doesn't have struggles, you guys, when it grows up, when that wind comes, the tree is going to fall over. But a tree that had wind, that taught it to do like this. Okay, because all that stuff is coming against me. I learned how to, okay, don't make me start dancing. and be a little more flexible and laugh and laugh at your problems. Yeah. Laugh at your yeah. We need to do that. Amen? Amen. 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 So here's a, one of the last things I want to say because I don't want to, well, two of the last things. It says you cannot transmit wisdom and insight to another person. I sort of disagree with that, but that's what the quote said. You cannot transmit wisdom and insight to another person. But they say this, the seed is already there. A good teacher touches the seed, allowing it to wake up, to sprout, to grow. The seed was already there. That's why when Pastor I would say, you all, we already have the seed inside of us. The seed was already inside of us. What we have to do is we have to touch it. We have to be able to water it. We got to allow it to grow. People make mistakes. That's the seed growing. Stop, why are you making all that mistake? Why are you not just like, stop. Let that kid learn. Mm -hmm. The way I knew, you guys, what some of my students were struggling, struggling with is because I knew they were trying to explain to me what they didn't understand. I gave them this test. I taught them this, this lesson. No, I didn't. I gave them a test. And they failed it. And then I was trying to explain it to them, but they couldn't get it. And one little boy was struggling to try to explain it to me what he wasn't getting. And the kids, other kids started talking like, and I said, stop, stop talking. Stop talking. I said, say that again. Say, say it again. And he told it to me. And when he said it, I said, I know what he's missing. I said, I got it. That caused me to go back and teach four lessons back. He was missing something. Not only he was missing it, they were missing it too. But he just was the one trying to explain it to me. 
there was a confusion. And I said, I got it. Once I got it, I could come back and I could teach it. That's what we have to do sometimes, you guys. When someone comes to us, don't be so quick to reprimand, quick. Try to listen. Let me listen. Let me listen. Because I'm planting a seed. I'm watering the seed. I got to be wise with this person. What is this person missing? What are they missing? There's a guy, his name was this. His name, and I shared this guy a video, but I'm not going to share it with you all. I shared a video with my, my care group called The Lighthouse Effect. And The Lighthouse Effect um, was about this guy named Steve Pemberton. And Steve Pemberton, you guys, is very famous now. They, they're making a movie about his life. And I found out, it says his, the, he, and he wrote a book and everything, books sold millions of copy. He's been on a lot of shows. But the thing about this man is this. They were talking about, he was talking about how his father was orphaned. His grandfather was orphaned. His mother died at 40. His grandmother died at 40. Wow. So he had a legacy of going into the system because he was now into the system. He was going into the, what do you call it again? Child service? Foster care. He was in the foster care system. He said, again, remember, his father was an orphan. Mom and dad died. His grandfather was an orphan. Now he's in the child care system. He said, but there was three people, three people that were lighthouses to him. And he said, those three people, ordinary people, we were talking about it. He said, those three people did this. One of them saw him sitting down reading the book. He said, that was the only book he had. And he would read the book over and over again. And the lady came to him and she says, um, you like to read? He said, yeah. She said, okay. The lady went. She had a whole box of books. She came back. He said, where's the boy who likes to read? She gave him the box of books. So now he had something to read. He said, the lady didn't know him from Adam. Gave him some, something to read. He said, then he was into this little spelling bee. This was all while he was in the foster care system. He was in a spelling bee competition. Now this kid, I think he's a mixed kid. And the first lady was a white lady. The second lady was a black lady. And he said, while he was in the spelling bee uh, competition, the black lady looks at him and she says, you're going to change the world. She said, look straight at him and said that to him. And he said, mind you, this lady probably said that to every child. But he needed to hear that. He needed to hear, you're going to change the world. And then he said, the last person was a guy. And they was trying to, he was getting ready to get out of this foster care system. They was, he was old, he's been in there a long time. And, and he said nobody wanted him. But he heard one of the foster care workers, one of the social workers say, if I had a son, I would love for him to be my son. He said that touched him. So the way they called him, they said, do you know anybody? Because they didn't find anybody to take this kid. They said, do, then they asked him, do you know anyone who would want to take you? And he said, I think Mr. So-and-so likes me. And so they called the man, John Sykes. They called him. And John said, if you all allow me to, I would love for him to be my son. He said, those three people changed his life. So here's a kid. These people, he said, these people didn't do anything. One just smiled at him, told him something. The other one just bought him books. The other one just took him in. He said, these people saw that I was in a something, in a situation where I was like already into this thing. I was already born into this thing. He said, I was drowning in a sea, and all they did was find a way to help me. They, it didn't take the people a master's degree. It doesn't take the people so much. God is trying to tell us today, it don't take us a lot to care for our brothers and sisters. It doesn't, you see someone in need, help. Say something nice. Yes, yes. Just a, a word. You're going to change the world. Man, do you know what that kid, that kid was like, what? I'm going to change the world. So that last slide says this. 
You are destined to accomplishment. You are destined for accomplishment and engineered for success and endowed with the seed of greatness. You already have it in you. We as the church, God calls the church just to be the one, you guys, to give that seed to water it. I was called to teach kids. At one time, I said, Lord, why don't you send me some kids that can help me? Because none of these kids in this, you sending me these kids, they don't know the word. Well, the Lord was like, if well, they knew the word, why would I send them to you? Right. Mm -hmm. I said, Lord, they help me. Maybe they'll, they, they don't want to hear no white-haired lady. They probably want to hear if another kid like them says the word to them. Maybe, he said, how do you know that? So when I start saying thank you, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for my kids. Now you should see y'all. I got all kinds of kids coming up in there. I got all kinds of kids coming in there. One little girl asked me, she said, Ms. Green, let me ask you a question. You say God loves us. I say, yes, he does. She said, Look, if I'm gay, will God still love me? I say, yes, he does. Yes, he does. That's right. Yes, he does. I say, he loves you. That's right. I said, but let me tell you something. All of us do something that God doesn't like. There's none that's righteous, no, not one. There's none of us better than the next person. I said, God doesn't like what we do. I can be straight, but I'm doing some foolishness. God don't like that. Just as much as he won't like what you do. Because he knows that's not what, you, what he made you for. I said, do you understand? No, another kid told her that. God like you, but he don't like what you do. You know how that kills me. <laughs> it's worse than me. I said, I said, but do you understand that? I said, I got to show that to you. So God is teaching me, all kind of kids are coming to me, don't reject a child. Don't reject a child, let them come in. Now you guys, I'm telling y'all, God is just sending them in. Just sending them in. And, and one little girl said, they just coming in here to get pizza. I said, that's not right, baby. <laughs> Bring them in, yeah, go get them. Exactly. I said, when, when they ask y'all, don't ask them, don't, don't, don't try to give them no scriptures, you guys. Just tell them, come and see. Yeah. Say, you really need to believe God. And Jesus taught me that, see, this is what the disciples did. The disciples didn't know that, all they said was come and see. Tell them, say, come and see. You belong to first priority? Come and see. They give you pizza? They'll come. Bring them. Just bring them. But guess what? God is bringing them in there for us to plant a seed. And you know what I'm doing? I'm praying, God. I'm praying to God like, God, teach me how to plant the seed into these kids. Teach me. Lord, tell me what to say to them. And when I tell you guys, every time you all, God gives me like examples. Like sometimes I'm not even prepared because I've been teaching all day. And here I am. I'm, I'm ready to do something. And then God will just give me the word to give to them. And they're like, how are you always using these examples? And you already, I don't even know. But the Lord is teaching me. So I'm saying this to you all. If you all want to be empowered, if you all want to grow in the Lord, if you all want to start seeing success, if you all want to see God multiply what you, whatever it is you have, start planting, you guys. Start sowing, you guys. Start pouring into someone else, you guys. Sow the seed. Amen? Amen. I know y'all tired, but y'all go out here. Y'all go. Well, one thing you can work on, remember, you got to do what, y'all? Sow the seed. Sow the seed. And then you get more seed. Amen? I'm not going to read that last scripture. You all don't have to turn to that. No, put it. And I'm going to read this. You guys, you know that whole scripture Pastor Isaac was talking about. That whole scripture really dealt with a lot of different types of seed, but it also dealt with tithing. And I got to say this, because this is the scripture that went here. And verse 6, it says, and God can give you more blessings than you need. And you will always have plenty of everything. This is when you sow. You will have enough to give to every good work. And then right under that scripture that says God gives the seed, it says, God will make you rich in what? In every way. Every way. So that you can always give what? Really. That's tithing. Mm -hmm. But that's also come with this seed. When you sow, God gonna give you. God gonna enrich you. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's give a hand, Lord. Let's give a hand. Let's give a hand. Amen. really a prayer like someone laying hands on you because you already have the word in you you just gotta 
Whatever it is you got in you. Like, oh, I only have one scripture, Pastor Edith. So is But I want to pray for anyone that's online, right? That you think that you don't have a seed. Or some of us in here that think that we don't have seeds. Like, Lord, I just got saved. I don't know nothing. So I want to pray for that person. Father, right now, Lord God, I pray for those online. I pray for those listening right now, Lord God, who feel that they don't have anything, that they're, they're not valuable, that they're not worthy, that no one sees them, that no one cares. But Father God, right now, Lord God, I'm telling them, Lord God, and I'm, I'm speaking your word over them right now, Lord God, and, and Father God, I want them to know that you love them. Yes. That you care, that you see them. That you've already put something inside of them, Lord God, that's so incredible. That they don't even know what's inside of them. They don't even know. Because, Father God, you know, Lord God, that someone can accidentally hit somebody in the head and we become geniuses. Because, Lord, you already put something in us, Lord God. There's a latent power inside of all of us. So I pray right now, Father God, for someone who feels that they're not worthy, that they don't, they're powerless. Because maybe they've been abused, Lord God, a lot, Lord God, and that seed has been thrown, Lord God, on concrete. And the seed, Lord God, has a hard time growing. But, Father God, right now I pray for them. I pray that you touch them, Lord God, and that seed begins to germinate. That seed begins to break up, Lord God. That seed begins to open up inside of them. That they understand, Lord God, that they're worthy. That they understand that they're strong. That they understand, Lord God, that they're your children. That they're your children and you care for them, Lord God. And you, you see them, you hear them. And you're a God that will never leave them nor forsake them. And so, Father God, I pray right now that they will receive you, Lord God. I pray that they will receive you right now, Lord God, into their hearts, Lord God. They will accept you as their father because if they, if you are their father, Lord God, then they, 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 they're made in your image. And they have your likeness. And so we can be God like as you call us to be, little God. And so I pray for them right now, Lord God. I pray for the children today. I pray for the children today. I pray for the young adults. Lord, you touch them. Quicken them, Lord God. Empower them, Lord God. Remove the labels off of them. Right now, Father God. Let them know, Father God, that you already placed greatness inside of them. That inside of them, they're carrying seeds of greatness, Lord God. That they're carrying seeds, Father God, of a powerful seed, Lord God, in them, Lord. And so I pray for them right now, Lord God, that you would touch them right now. And if they don't know you, Lord God, I pray that they come to know you right now, Father God. And if they don't know you, Father God, that they would repeat after me, Lord God, that they would say, Father, Father I, come to you, Lord, I come to you, Lord, knowing, knowing that you raised Jesus from the dead. And you say, Lord God, you say, that if I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, that you raised Jesus from the dead, Jesus from then, I will be saved. then I will be saved. And so, Lord God, save me now. I accept you as my Father. And I accept you as my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you pray that prayer.